what do men have to do? What's the advantage of them giving up power? Yep. I love the question. And I've been asked it so many times. I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I knew you were. <laughs> One of the things I like to say early on when I'm giving a talk somewhere is that nothing that I'm saying is male bashing. I'm not here to bash men, all right? In fact, if I really wanted to bash men, if I really want to say something toxic to men, I would start with this. Don't do anything. Keep everything exactly as it is. Don't change at all. That's the most toxic thing I can tell men. Why? The numbers speak for themselves, folks. Buckle your seatbelt. Here we go. Look at incarceration rates. Men are incarcerated 11 times more than women. Look at suicide rates. Men commit suicide at four times the rate of women. Whoa, I didn't know that. And in some regions, that's over 10 times. All right. right. Nationally four times. And this is the CDC. This is the National Institute of Health. Look at, especially if they've been in military service, the suicide rates for men who've been in military service are off the charts. Mm. And part of the reason for this, and I've spoken to lots of military personnel, is that when a man goes into the military, women too, but especially men, they are taught you don't reach out for help. If you've got a problem, you fix it. You fix it on your own. You take charge and you don't ask others for help. That that's, that that's a feminine thing to do. That, that women can ask for help, but not men. That you're supposed to be a man and man up and, and be tough. And that's killing us. Literally killing us. That guys are taught that they can't emote. That they can't have the human emotions of fear of anxiety, of loneliness, of self-doubt, that we have to constantly put on this front, which is it's like an armor that we put on ourselves, that we're tough and invulnerable and, and are, you know, unafraid of anything. And it's killing us. We're developing heart disease at greater rates, always have. We die earlier than most women, statistically. Right. And when you put in the crime rates and the statistics of incarceration, who wants that? Nobody wants that for themselves, nor do they want it for their sons. Nobody wants to think that I'm going to raise some boys who might be trotting off to prison someday for some misdeeds. Nobody wants that. So, so how I do you connect the culture to, to the culture? to the outcome that you're talking about, all of those uh, disastrous outcomes? The culture itself is toxic because we teach men that to be a man is not just to be tough and strong and invulnerable. And when it comes to your family, you're supposed to be a provider and protector, overwhelmingly. But you are also taught Behind this toughness, you can't do anything or feel anything or, or behave in any way that could be considered feminine. And so what they're doing, what our culture does, is it takes human traits like empathy, love, compassion, generosity, and we call those things feminine. And then we call other things like ambition, uh, competition strength and all, we call those things masculine so we're literally from the time we are little boys being taught never be feminine never do anything that's considered feminine and always do these things that are masculine the culture is teaching us this then the next thing we teach boys when they get a little bit older is to be a man is to be successful and we're talking about money in a capitalist society like America, you were taught a successful man is a man with resources. Why, why, is, why do people love Trump, the people that love Trump? They, 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 may have a, right, they may have a number of things they say, but listen to what, one of the things you'll always hear from a Trump supporter when, when the rubber hits the road and you want to say, what do you like about this guy? And the, one of the things they'll say is, look how rich he is. Look how successful he's been. That somehow the fact that he's made all this money, or at least he inherited it, and so that he's made all this money is a measurement of his manhood, a measurement of his masculine strength. We are told 
this boys are taught this from the time we are young, that we should strive that women are commodities, that money is something that we should have and we should show that in lots of ways with our fancy cars and you know the way we talk. And so all of this is culture driven. This is driven. And, and by the way, I want to say that that particular point I'm making now is something that transcends race and ethnicity. Right. You find this throughout different you know, cultures. It's not just white masculinity we're talking about here that are taught that being successful, having lots of, of women at your disposal, having money so you can have fast cars. That's been taught to boys forever. There's nothing new about any of this. And it, tran it transcends race and ethnicity.